Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we're starting a new series, but before we talk about that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can see our videos as they come out. Now, on to our new series. It is going to be called Really Serious reviews. This is a new series where we only talk about really serious reviews. Like this game that we'll be talking about, we don't know who it's published by, we don't know who it's designed by, there's no indication of anything, nobody's ever going to find out, is it even on Board Game Geek? Who knows? And that is Desktop Pool Table, capital T that rhymes with P that stands for pool. Oh boy. All right, so yeah, a lot of times, as you know, we like to have fun on this channel. We, you know, mm -hmm. let things get a little loose, a little out of control. A little. Not on this time. Not when we're doing these games and this kind of, when we do our really serious reviews, we're going to be very serious, very professional, yeah. right? We don't want to, we want to give you guys the most accurate possible reviews um, of these games. So, um, yeah, so we're, we're this is a, you know, desktop pool table. This is a two-player abstract game in which players compete, um, trying to put their uh, balls in these holes in the table. It's kind of like golf almost, right? Kind of like, you know, kind of like, like move them along, trying to get them into the, the holes in the table. Uh, let me sh show you what it looks like on the table. All right, here we have our setup for tabletop pool. So what we have here is this triangle, okay? A triangle has three sides. We have our, our ball here, a circle. A three-dimensional circle is called a sphere. So we've got a white sphere. And then we also have a rectangle with two parallel lines and four 90-degree angles. Really, this game is all about teaching shapes. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this off. Okay, so now we're going to try to use this stick here, this stick wand, to try to hit that ball into these balls. And then all these balls are going to kind of disperse and try to hide in these pockets on the various parts all over the rectangle board. Now, there are many colors, so what we're really doing is we're learning shapes and we're learning colors. This is the perfect uh, way to introduce kids to those concepts of shapes and colors. All right, so we have our our spheres. Remember our circular spheres? Uh, those are going to be the ones all, all different colors. There are ones that are solid and there's ones that have stripes. And now once these get assigned to certain players, you're trying to get your either solid colors or stripes into these holes in our board. All right, so once you get all of yours into the, into the corners, the last one you want to try to get is this black one. I know that it is a solid color, but for reasons unknown to me, it can be either a solid or a stripe, but it's the last one that either team puts in. The rules weren't clear on this, but either way, it's the last one that goes in. I also hear tell that it can predict the future if you ask it a question. I don't know about that though. This is what it might look like. So you might say, all right, um, uh, magic eight ball, will this be, will I be the stripes or will I be the solids? And then you hit it and ho however you want, really. I think you just kind of like hit it. Okay, so I'm, I knocked the blue solid one in. Uh, so now I'm going to be the solid colors. You take turns doing that, knocking these balls into the holes until one player knocks all those in and then follows that up with knocking the eight ball into one of the holes in the board. That player will be declared the winner. So the dexterity component of extraction, so when the balls were in the holes and we needed to get them out at the end of the game, it was kind of difficult. You needed like really nimble, tiny fingers, which I thought I had nimble, tiny fingers, but I I guess I don't. It was just difficult. Yeah, I mean, so we're pretty sure this is a game that's for kids. It's not necessarily marketed as a good game yeah. for kids. Um, we really, it wasn't really marketed at all. Right. I mean, they didn't even spend any any, any money on on the advertising or the the artwork. Um, you know, it's just a really plain box. I think what they were going for is a really like kind of like a minimalist style art, um, which I can really respect, except for there's not enough information to kind of go with here. Yeah. And really, when you're comparing this, you know, to some of the games behind us that has some of more vibrant colors and co vibrant art, I really wish they would have spent a little bit more time trying to to grab our attention with something besides just this this plain box. But again, <laughs> really sleek, really modern. Um, it just doesn't convey a lot of information to us. Yeah, there wasn't even like a rule book, not even a QR code for a rule book. It was just like nothing, like most basic of basic. It wasn't one of those games that they teach you as you play. It was a game where they're like, teach yourself to play. Yeah, I think again, it was almost like an, a kind of like a an art project in a way. Like you got to interpret the rules how you wanted. Yeah. Play, we get the game, you know, the game, the, the components are just kind of a construct that you get to play within your own, you know, maybe that's preferences. How, maybe that's how they get out of paying a designer. Uh, maybe, you know, that's a shame. It's, 
you know. Throw things together. Right. But I will say also that uh, the components in this game were pretty solid, even though we didn't know what they were used for. Um, you know, the, yeah. the the balls were, were really nice quality. The table itself was, was you know, the, the, the desktop table uh, was, was this nice wood. Um, you know, the wands, the sticks, you know, we call them wands because it made a lot of sense. Yeah. We weren't really sure what those were for, though. All right, so do we both go at the same time? No, you go first. No, do I block you? Okay, you block. I'll block. You go. No, block. Go again. No. If you go sideways, I think you get a couple at a time. Whoa, that was a good move. You got a lot in one time. This game did come with one dice, uh, and again, the rules weren't clear as far as what it was for. We had to kind of, kind of figure that out ourselves as we went along. Hey, have you figured how to use this dice? It just doesn't seem to be really doing anything. Let me just... It doesn't roll well at all. Let me try it in here. What does that mean, though? Pioneer. Like, I don't. Are we pioneers? I thought we were. Do, I thought this was an abstract. Is this a Western game? Do we need like the blue side to be up? If the blue side's up. What is that? So oh, maybe, oh, there's one. We rolled one one dot. Maybe it means you go first. Like we just keep rolling it until somebody gets the one. And that means that they're the first player. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Maybe it's like a trophy. Maybe you put this on top and it's like a trophy. Like, you win? I don't know. And can we talk about that really weird insert for the spheres? Yeah, the sphere, the balls. The ball spheres? It, well, yeah, just spheres is that way we can learn the geometry. Oh, yeah. Well, yes. The colored spheres. The colored spheres. It, it, I think that that was made out of spider webs. You know, I don't. I don't know if it's a really vegan friendly game. Let me just reach in here and grab one of the one of the balls really quick here. Like, ah, that's spider webs. Ooh. How many spiders had to die to make that happen? Way too many. Way too many. Absolute tragedy. All right, but you know, we did have an idea about this game, something that could make you maybe take it to the next level. Yeah, pretty excited about this actually. All right, so have you ever been to a convention and seen one of those like giant versions of a game? Like, you know, we've seen, like, Giant Catan or Mammoth King of Tokyo. They were these huge, oversized pieces. Well, this is a desktop pool table. Um, we thought about what if they made this game into a giant version? What if they used um, a surface maybe the size of perhaps, like, a table itself? Like, you know, a huge table. You could have wands, like, the size of your body. Like, instead of a wand, it would almost be like a staff. Yeah, it would so be a staff. it's still a magical device, yeah. right? It's just a wand. It's a staff instead and of a wand. And the spheres would... Be like, yeah. We think the spheres would also be bigger, like, like maybe like this big. Exactly. Yeah, I could definitely see like this giant mammoth version of it. You know, the size of a table. I could see it like in people's houses, like in their basement. You know, where they hang out. Yeah, I could totally you see, see that. a giant desktop pool table. Yeah, I think would be what it, we would call it. Yeah, giant desktop pool table. You could put just, this. You could put this in bars and taverns. I think that that would be a fantastic way people would be able to see this giant oh, desktop yeah. pool table. And buy people like, in. People would want to come in. Oh like wow, that. what are they playing over there? A board game? A, a giant version of a board game? Like an like an like a gateway game. Exactly. I think people yes. would really be drawn into the hobby by getting a chance to see you know a board game put on a bigger a bigger. Um, platform like that. I think that would be really eye-catching. Uh, it'd be just a lot of fun, I think. Yeah. All right, so all in all, yeah, we mentioned this is a two-player abstract game. There are other variants as well. Remember, you to make the rules, because there are no rules. True. Um, so for that, it was, it was interesting. Ultimately, though, I feel, I feel like they, they really missed the mark on the marketing. Uh, the, the name is a little bit clunky. Desk, you know, desktop, desktop pool, pool table. table. Yeah. It just, yeah. Doesn't, you know, doesn't flow. Yeah, I mean, I think... There's some fun here to be had, definitely. Um, especially if you know some of the magical incantations to use with the wands that can really take it to the next level. Yeah, we couldn't figure any of them out, but we, we assumed that they were there. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I think, like I said, you know, there's other games that have better art and better marketing, and I think those are going to catch our attention more often. Um, so we probably aren't going to keep this in our collection. Yeah. I, I don't think it has a lot of staying power. I just can't see people being like, hey, do you want to go out and play desktop pool table? Like, I just can't people see people, like, texting or calling each other about that. It right. It just doesn't seem like a thing. But maybe at the beginning of a, of a board game night, you know, zero people to arrive or whatever. Yeah. That could be fun. Yeah, and then you might learn if anybody knows any of the incantations. Exactly. Yeah. 
Well, thank you everybody for joining us for our really serious review. If you would like to see all of our content, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. We are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. On Facebook, we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. On Twitter, we are Ryan and Bethany One. And on Instagram, we are Ryan and Bethany. All right, you guys, this was, you know, like I said, a very, you know, this is a really serious yeah. review. Um, you know, keep in mind, we do do funner stuff. If this wasn't your thing, we do do more, more, um, more lighthearted reviews at some times yeah. as well. So, so stay tuned. We're always doing fun stuff yeah. uh, or very serious things as well. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you later. Bye, everybody. Bye. Don't smile. <laughs> Willie, serious. Until next time, everyone. Bye.